Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar. Today we're going to talk about Putnam 2002 number B3. And this is an interesting problem involving an inequality where you compare 1 over E to this number right over here, which actually is a, an approximation of 1 over E. Um, in calculus, one learns that the limit as n approaches infinity of this quantity right over here actually is 1 over E. And so uh, the question is to prove that this estimate for any positive integer n is actually between 1 over 2ne and 1 over ne. All right, so let's get ourselves started. Um, so the first thing I want to do is sort of eliminate this 1 over e factor right over here. So to do that, what we'll do is we'll subtract it off. So we get that this inequality is equivalent to 1 over 2ne minus 1 over e being less than negative 1 over 1 minus n to the n being less than being less than 1 over n e minus 1 over e. All right, uh, so let's now multiply by this negative sign right over here. And the reason to do that is uh, the quantities that we have on the left and the right, 1 over 2 n e, uh, minus 1 over e and 1 over n e minus 1 over e are both negative um, and the reason being n is greater than 1 so uh, it makes sense to multiply by negative 1 and so our in equivalent inequality is going to look like this being greater than 1 over 1 minus 1 over n to the n being greater than uh, 1 minus 1 over n uh, and then we have these e's on the bottom Okay, and then we'll multiply by e as well, just to make things sort of uniform. And so if we do that, we'll have uh, 1 minus 1 over 2n being greater than e times this quantity being greater than 1 minus 1 over n as our equivalent uh, inequality. Okay, so this is great, but it's still a little bit confusing. It's not really easy to see what to do with this expression right over here. Um, so what I think we could do is try to make things look uniform. We have a 1 over 1 minus 1 over n right over here. If we can somehow make things look like um, inequalities in terms of 1 minus 1 over some things, at least things look uniform and we can get some traction. And we can do that by taking logarithms here. So if we do that, we'll have the logarithm of 1 minus 1 over 2n is greater than, I'll do uh, the logarithmic expansion here. So log of e is one, and then we'll have an n log of one minus one over n um, being greater than log of one minus one over n. And the reason why these inequalities are actually still satisfied is because the logarithm is an increasing function. Okay, now, um, how do we actually compare these? At least we have these in sort of a uniform fashion. Um, so one thing we can do is exploit the fact that the logarithm of 1 minus x actually has a predictable Taylor series expansion. So the negative of this actually expands to x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fourth over 4, etc. And this converges for the values of x that we have in our expressions, namely 1 over 2n and 1 over n. These are small values that are positive. Uh, okay, so what we can do then is try to establish an inequality for the Taylor series of these three expressions we have in the inequalities and compare term by term. And then we're fine because these um, series will actually converge to the values you want. Now to do that, we'll need to multiply by a negative sign. So we need to change things up a little bit here. So then multiplying by a negative sign would exchange these inequalities and make some negative. So we'd have negative, less than negative, negative, less than this is the thing we're aiming to prove. Okay, so let's look at each of these particular expansions. So here, if we look at the contribution of the x to the k over k term, it's going to look like 1 over n to the k over k, which is 1 over k times n to the k. Okay, that's great. And then here, we'll have a similar thing. We'll get 1 over 2n to the k over k, 
which is 1 over k times 2 to the k times n to the k. And so we already see that this term on the left is less than this term here on the right because for any positive value of k, k times 2 to the k is greater than k. So when we have that in the denominator, we'll get the inequality in the other direction. So the question is, what's going on with this middle term? Okay, so first of all, the first term in the expansion of each of these three series is negative 1. So we'll ignore this negative 1 contribution and look at a random term of this expression. So we get 1 over n to the k over k, but then we have this contribution of this n. So we'll get uh, 1 over k times 1 over n to the k minus 1, which actually means that in the expression for this series, the 1 over n to the k term is going to have a 1 over k plus 1 beside it in the denominator by shifting the index. Okay, and so since k plus 1 exceeds k, this quantity is actually going to be less than this quantity. And this quantity is also going to be greater than this quantity for k greater than 1 because for k greater than 1, k plus 1 is less than k times 2 to the k. Okay, great. So we have that term by term, the series match up with inequalities in the right way. And so we have this these two inequalities here actually preserved which means as we go backward, we get our original inequality that we wanted. Okay, so what can we learn from this? So I think the two things that we can learn is, a first step when problem solving is actually trying to get things to look in a uniform manner. And we did that by introducing the logarithm. Even though things don't look uniform to begin with, taking the logarithm allows for a uniformity later. And then when we're at that uniform stage, we can go ahead and employ power series expansions that we might know in order to get a sense of how to actually establish the inequalities that we want. Great, so an interesting solution and a systematic way to go about it for an interesting problem. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, definitely click the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, definitely subscribe to the channel.